If you have been told that you only have osteopenia, you might think you're safe, but this so-called mild condition is where the real damage often begins. Osteopenia is that risky middle ground between healthy bones and osteoporosis, and this makes it far more dangerous than most people realize. I'm Dr. Barron, and in this video I will discuss three situations in which osteopenia is more serious than you think. In fact, the last two situations are actually more risky than having osteoporosis show up on a scan because misunderstanding their results can make people think their bones are stronger than they really are and delay treatment that could prevent serious fractures. The first problem with osteopenia is underestimating the risk. Bone density is measured with a test called DEXA scan, where we get a T-score. T-score compares your bone density to the peak bone density of a healthy 30-year-old adult. A T-score of negative one or higher is considered normal. Between negative one and negative 2.5 is osteopenia, and a T-score of negative 2.5 or lower is osteoporosis which means your bones are much weaker and at a higher risk of fracture. T-score is not an exact percentage of bone loss, but for example, a T-score of negative 1.5 means your bones have lost about 18% of their strength compared to a healthy 30-year-old. So even mild osteopenia represents meaningful bone weakening. Patients often ask me, doctor, is it bad to have osteopenia? Well, this reminds me of the famous riddle about the perplexing businessman. His business model was to buy a pencil for $1 and sell it for five cents. And he kept doing it over and over and over again. And finally, after many years, he became a millionaire. You might think, how can that be? How can someone become a millionaire if they lose 95 cents with each sale? Well, the answer is that he started out as a billionaire. It's the same idea with osteopenia. You need to realize that you started as a billionaire with a normal bone density. And at this point, even if you're a millionaire, you already lost a substantial amount of bone strength. And if you keep going the same way, you're well on your way to osteoporosis. One exception is that some people never reach normal peak bone density in early adulthood. For example, people who were in their 20s when they were supposed to gain their peak bone density did not get enough vitamin D and calcium or did not exercise regularly or drank too much alcohol, they may have never reached normal density. So when we find on bone density scan that they have osteopenia, they might not be actively losing a lot of bone. Their bone density may be stable, but it shows osteopenia because they never had a strong starting point. They may be stable, but they also never benefited from the protection of starting with truly strong bones. Osteopenia is dangerous because people tend to ignore it much more often than people with osteoporosis. So when I see patients with osteoporosis, I do the exact same evaluation as if they already have osteoporosis. We check vitamin D level, homocysteine, calcium and parathyroid levels, testosterone in men, and if there is a reason to suspect pituitary issues, I check prolactin, IGF-1, and cortisol testing. We make sure that they take enough vitamin D3 and K2, depending on their lab results and diet. We also make sure that they do weight-bearing exercises and resistance training, and and that they are not taking medications that worsen bone loss. Reason number two, osteopenia is risky, is because of misinterpretation of the bone density results. I had a patient with very bad osteoporosis in her spine. She refused to take any osteoporosis medications and said that she would take vitamins and exercise. One year later, she came back feeling very proud. Her DEXA scan indeed looked much better. Her T-score went from negative three to negative one. She was delighted to tell me that she was able to reverse her osteoporosis and now had osteopenia, or what she thought was osteopenia. But when I see that kind of improvement from negative three to negative one in one year without medicine, I get worried. I asked her, do you have any back pain? She said yes, and told me that she was working so hard on improving her bones that she hurt her back lifting weights at the gym. We checked her height, and she had lost 
one inch. We got x-rays and that's where we found the real problem. She had a compression fracture in her spine. Here's what happened. A bone density scan is like an x-ray. If more of the rays pass through the bone, it shows lower density. Osteoporosis bones are full of tiny holes, like a sponge, so more rays can pass through. When her vertebra collapsed from the fracture, the bone got compressed together. That made it look denser on the scan, even though the bone was actually worse. So the scan looked better from negative 3 to negative 1, but her bones were weaker than ever because by the time someone has one spine fracture, their risk of more fractures goes way up. That's why misreading a bone scan and thinking that the bones are better than they are can be very dangerous. The third reason osteopenia can be dangerous is that doctors and patients don't always realize something important. If you have a fragility fracture, you actually have osteoporosis. Even even if your bone scan shows only osteopenia. A fragility fracture is a break that happens from a small injury, something that should not break a healthy bone. For example, breaking a bone from a simple fall from a standing height, tripping while walking, or even bending or lifting something light. Here's the key point. If you have a fragility fracture, you have osteoporosis, no matter what your DEXA scan shows. Even if your scan shows osteopenia, that fracture proves the bones are weak. Sometimes people are told your skin isn't that bad, so they think everything is okay, but the body has already given the real answer. Healthy bones don't break from small falls or simple movements. That's why fragility fractures are so important. They tell us the bones are weak, even when the scans look better than it should. Ignoring this can delay treatment and make you more likely to have more fractures later. And this leads me to my last point. When it comes to osteoporosis, the best thing you can often do is take medication to help build stronger bones. Many times I prescribe osteoporosis medications and patients go home, read online about all the scary side effects and call back the office and say, tell the doctor there's no way I'm taking this medication. Now when I prescribe these medicines, I tell my patients, yes, all medications can have side effects and people who develop side effects are much more likely to go online to complain. But think about this. People who take the medicine and prevent a fracture don't go online and say, I'm so happy I took osteoporosis medication because I did not break my bones today. People don't think about the bad things that didn't happen to them. No one posts, I'm so happy that I did not break my hip so I did not have to cancel the trip of a lifetime. No one writes, I'm so glad I spared myself the embarrassment of breaking my foot while dancing at my grandchildren child's wedding. So it's important to find a doctor whose judgment you trust and consider treatments where the benefits outweigh the risks because stronger bones can help prevent serious injuries that could change your life. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and share it with someone who may need it. This video is for educational purposes only and not medical advice. See you in the next one.